what we've what we've found is that is that uh, for a long period of time um, the knowledge was pretty was pretty good that as you went deeper your probability rose exponentially of finding gas because the pressures are so high that the oil gets were baked into gas back about oh, 10 or 15 years ago a group of scientists went back and 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 in the Gulf of Mexico, you have these incredible salt layers. And I said, what if actually there was oil trapped below the salt? And so they really found the basement of the Gulf of Mexico. About 25,000 feet deep, there are some, they're not giants, but they're you know, surprising large pools of oil. Uh, we barely have any production history, though, of those oil. And, they can't, and they, you can't pressure test them. I mean, you can't flow test them because they're too deep. So, so we do know that there is some oil down in the, in fact, there was an enormous amount of hype about about uh, uh, a year ago last summer when Chevron announced that the jack well had, had, un, had opened up the lower tertiary in the Gulf of Mexico. And it was amazing. By the end of that day, there were analysts saying, oh my gosh, we've just found the new, you know, 10 new Prudhoe Bays. What they basically said is if the lower tertiary is producible, there, it looks like there may be as many as 60 structures over 180 miles. And the jack well basically, they were so excited because they flow tested it for 30 days. Well, you know, at those pressures, you'd have to flow test it for six months to know if, if every six months they, the rocks tighten again, the cost of producing that would be unbelievable. And I was with Chevron executives two weeks ago at a training program I'm doing, and one of the people saying, you know, one of our problems is just awful, the ring shortage is so acute that it'll probably be three more years before we can go back and do the second test well on the jack field. So even if we do have some fabulous resources, the fabulous needs to be put in perspective. I don't believe they think the jack well would flow over 70 or 80,000 barrels a day. So when we're talking about replacing a 10 million barrel a day gap, it won't happen. The optimist point to the United States of America and say that we have now, uh, we have now, that two thirds of the wells drilled in the world have been drilled in the United States. And I'm not quite sure that's exactly the number, but it's in magnitude, that's right. And, and if we basically just created, if you put, if you put 5,000 drilling rigs in Saudi Arabia, then they could probably triple their output. Well, we had 1,000 rigs running in the United States, mostly for oil, in 1970 when we peaked. And by 1981, we had 4,500 rigs running, mostly drilling for oil, and our oil production fell from 10.1 to 6.9. <laughs> so in the United States today, we have 36,000 individual oil fields, but collectively they produce 5 million barrels a day of oil. And in the Middle East, they're 35 to 40 oil fields, but they've spent 40 years trying to find more, and they just don't seem to be anymore. And all those 40 oil fields are now almost every one over their 50% depletion, which is why people like Dr. Hosseini are now publicly stating that the Middle East has is, is, is reached its peak. I don't think we can jack up the price of oil. I think oil will basically rise dramatically as the supply-demand imbalance gets, gets acute. Uh, there are a lot of people that believed with a passion that $30 oil would create a recession. It obviously didn't. There are a lot of people that, say, that they thought that $70 oil could never be sustained. It obviously didn't make a dent. Uh, there are an enormous amount of people that can't believe that we're kind of hovering around $90 a barrel. And then I basically just observed $90 a barrel is 13 cents a cup. It's cheap. Uh, I think prices will go up. I think it was a tragedy they stayed so low for so long. We used up our finest oil for free. I also think that wellhead revenues are going to be astonishing. Then the question becomes, how are they reinvested? And if, and if we use the wellhead revenues, <coughs> if the Middle East, the leadership of the Middle East, aren't inherently all evil people, they just never had enough money to address creating a middle class. <coughs> and, and so they're going to have a time, a, a day in the sun to use these trillions of dollars to create a sustainable middle class so that they exist after oil is gone. And look at the history of the world. 
I mean, how many years did Ireland North Ireland fight? A long time. They brought pharmaceutical industry to Ireland, and it's now second world <coughs> wealthiest country in the OECD. And there's no fight anymore. So you, you, you create 600 million people who are living without jobs, in the nice paying jobs, uh, you know, uh, let women in the workforce and so forth, and get their GDP per capita up to $15,000 per person, which is the bottom end of Europe, and I think you'll create peace in the Middle East. Now, I'm not an anthropologist or a judge, I that's just common economic sense. Don't ever again say, oil is just another commodity. It goes up and it goes down. And the connotation of that is it's kind of like a crabgrass. So oil and natural gas, the hydrocarbons, were the most unbelievable miracle we've ever had. And they totally transformed the world from a dirty world we had in 1900 to this unbelievable world that the, 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 the wealthy countries of the world have today. Uh, and unfortunately, those we're, 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 we're running out of the highest quality supply. And so don't be alarmed when oil prices go up and gas prices go up. Be pleased that we're finally starting to recognize the scarce value of what we should have, we should have been you know, so blessed to have had. And it will help us focus on the fact that we need to go to a war footing. We need to take data very seriously. Don't ever just assume that Saudi Arabia has 11.3 million barrels a day of spare capacity because they say they do. Force the data find people that don't produce the data, they're being too dangerous. Um, er everybody wins if we have data reform. Organize a summit and address seriously how we start pulling our belt in and, and, and changing our transportation systems. Uh, invest in R&D across the board in every form of energy. Don't bet the ranch on they're gonna work until they have actually been invented. And, and, uh, and, and make this a combination of a Marshall Plan and a Manhattan Project, and then do a little praying that it works. If it doesn't, the rest of our lives are going to be very dark.